Okay, uh, any question before the class? Right. Okay, time. Uh, let's get started. Uh, uh, today, today is the first. Uh, today we are still in the you know first week. So uh, today's class will be uh, introductory. So probably you can you know sit back and relax, but uh, do not sleep because it will give you some important background information, okay? Uh, today we'll talk about, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, how fast computer technology has been advanced in you know, the past 30 to 40 years. And we will talk about a little bit about, you know, IO devices, CPU, and computer built-in block, which is transistor. Okay, those topics, okay, some, you know, background. So first, uh, okay, you know, look at this. That is my, you know, first computer back in 1990 when I was college student like you. Uh, I purchased that computer. Okay, so let's go through some specification and compare that uh, against uh, the uh, the computer in my office. Okay, to show you how you know fast computer technology has been advanced. So 19. 90 and 2021, okay? The computer in my office, this computer, actually. So look at this, uh, CPU. Uh, CPU, uh, CPU was 286, which is 16-bit computer. For now, don't worry too much about this number, 16-bit computer or 32-bit computer. We will talk about that in detail, okay? And the computer in my office, uh, you, you can probably install, you want to install this utility program called CPU-Z, Google search. Google search with the CPU-Z and run it. Install it and run it. Then it gives you, uh, it, give, it shows you, you know, detailed uh, information about your computer. Okay, the computer in my office, look at this. That is the computer, Core i7. So 10th generation, 107 something, right? So uh, Core, Core i7, 10th generation. So 10700. So 10th generation Core i7, which is 64 bit computer computer and how fast let me move it down how fast it was running it was running at 12 megahertz the clock speed uh, 12 megahertz CPU my CPU okay and core i7 uh, look at this number 2.5 2.9 gigahertz. So if you compare that number against this one, uh, for simple math, let's approximate 10, uh, 10, just 10, right? 10 and three, three gigahertz. Okay, three gigahertz. Then how fast this guy is? Roughly 300 times, right? 300 times faster than uh, the computer, okay, back in 1990. But if you press, you know, there is a turbo button. So if you press that button and CPU was able to run, it's blazing fast, 16, 16 megahertz. Really, it was really fast at the time, okay? How, how about main memory? Memory. Uh, memory. Back in 1990, uh, that computer had one megabyte main memory, okay? How about in my office? 
computer in my office. Click on this. Here, CPU memory, right? Memory. Click on this. Let me get this number. Uh, DDR4, the size is 32. 32 gigabyte. Compare that number. Compare those numbers. If you compare those numbers, uh, it is 32, roughly 32,000 thousand times bigger. Okay, main memory is 30,000 uh, 30, times bigger. Okay, how about hard disk? Uh, hard disk, uh, 20 megabyte. Okay, I don't want to write here. Okay, 20 megabyte. And I uh, upgraded it to 30 megabyte. Okay, 30 megabyte. And for that, I invested $100. $100 to upgrade. Okay, 10, 10 megabyte more. And the computer in my office had, I think, eight. Not, I think two terabyte, something like that. Two terabyte, two terabyte. So you know, 20 megabyte. The unit is different, megabyte, gigabyte, then you know, terabyte, right? So unit is you know, uh, you know, two orders of magnitude, more than two orders, right? So unit, you know, two, two you know, unit difference. And the monitor was black and white. And it was running an uh, operating system called DOS. Anyone, anyone know DOS? So if you run uh, the command on Windows like this, CMD, so that was the screen I see when I boot up the computer. So if you boot your Windows machine and your computer shows very nice GUI environment, right? Graphics user interface. So what you have to do? Just click on those icons, right? Right. But in back in 1990, let me close. Uh, back in 1990, when I boot up my computer, the screen I see is this. This is the screen I see. Then here I had to type command of something like DIR. Okay. And then it shows all the files and directories. Then if you want to change, folders to download, then you have to do CD down, download like this. Then DIR, you can see all the files here. So that was the screen I see okay, when I put up my computer. That is uh, DOS, DOS uh, operating system. And guess what? Uh, how much do you think I paid for this? Uh, this uh, <laughs> Antique, antique machine. So I paid roughly $1,000, $1,000 for this antique machine. So if you uh, invest the same amount of money, same amount of money today, then you can purchase very, very decent, super decent you know, computer, okay? So if you compare those numbers, this computer, I can say this computer in my office is roughly one, more than 1 million times. 1 million times you know faster than you know 30 years the the computer 30 years ago so computer technology has been advancing you know that you know that fast only a 30 year difference more than 1 million times better performance okay and look at this i managed to find this uh, tv commercial back in 1990 where is that Okay, hold on. There's something hidden. Oh, okay, here it is. Here. There is a YouTube video. I'm not sure if you are able to hear the audio. No, right? Can you?
yeah, one computer is enough for entire family, right? That is advertisement. So, you know, computer ad back in 1990. And also I managed to find this, uh, this, you know, okay, let me close. Let me close this. YouTube, you know, keep playing, you know, next, you know, video, okay? So I managed to find this, you know, commercial, you know, this uh, TV, you know, this advertise, computer advertisement back in 1990. Okay, this one, Singmin, can you please? Digital revolution, control technology has been advancing rapidly. Progress in computer technology makes novel applications possible. In the recent past, the following applications were computer science fiction, composed computers in automobiles, smartphones, human genome project, World Wide Web, and search engines. Now, computers are pervasive. Computers are virtually everywhere in our daily lives. Lives. <clears throat> yeah, our daily lives. Okay, so, uh, you know, look at those, uh, look at those applications, computers in car, okay, smartphone, human genome project. Uh, those, those, you know, technology, uh, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, those uh, technologies appeared in a you know, sci-fi movie, like 007 movie. But you know, uh, those are, nowadays, those are part of our daily lives. Right? We are living with uh, those technologies, you know, these days. Okay? Uh, thanks to the, the advancement of computer technology. Okay, uh, computer classification. Computer can be classified into three categories. Uh, this one. Sojong, can you please? Classes of computers, personal computers, PC, general purpose, desktop, notebook, netbook, servers, running larger programs from multiple users, usually Accesses via network, high capacity performance, reliability, range from small servers to building size, low end used from used for small business or web serving, high end supercomputers or data center with hundreds to thousands processors with terabytes of memory and petabytes of storage. Embedded computers, a computer inside another device used for running predetermined applications. Example, GPS navigator, robots, car. Okay, thanks. Uh, you know, computers can be classified into these three categories, uh, personal computer, server computer, and embedded computer. Probably I don't have to explain, you know, personal computer, right? Because you are, so your computer is PC, right? Notebook, desktop computers and server computer. And there are small server computers and building sized server computers. You know, building sized computers are called supercomputer or you know, data center. And then the question is, what is the difference between these two? Personal computer and for example, supercomputer, for example. What is the difference between these two? Uh, from hardware perspective, there's not much difference. You know, supercomputer has a lot of CPUs. You know, I told you last time, right? Computer. Computer uh, is composed of three big, you know, components, right? First one, CPU, memory, second, and a lot of IO devices. So in case of supercomputer, you have a lot of CPUs and you have super big main memory and super big storage, right? That is supercomputer from hardware perspective. Let me give you one example. If you uh, go to uh, this web page, go to this top500.org. Please. Okay. And it is announcing uh, world best top 500 supercomputers. 
you know, twice every year. If you check out this, top 500, right? So 2020, last year, June, June and November, okay? 2019, June and November. So they are announcing, uh, you know, supercomputer ranking, okay? Uh, two times a year. Let's check out the latest, June 2021. Scroll it down. Here, number one, supercomputer is located where? In Japan, right? Number two, United States. Three, United States, right? So check out this, the uh, num world number one, supercomputer. So little uh, detailed specification. Uh, look at this, cores, right? CPUs. How many CPUs? How many CPUs? Uh, 7.6 million. 7.6 million, million CPUs. Okay, how big main memory? Main memory? Uh, your PC, how big main memory do you have in your PC, notebook computer? Probably four gigabyte, eight gigabyte, around that you know, number, right? Four gigabyte, eight gigabyte. But look at this. Uh, how, how do you have to, how do you read this, this number? Next to you, gigabyte, next to you need this what? Terabyte, right? And the next unit is petabyte. So this number, five petabyte of memory, right? Five petabyte of memory. So the supercomputer, you know, 7.6 million uh, CPUs somehow connected together, okay? So if you submit a job, then your, you know, job may be split into 7.6 million pieces. And each CPU, each CPU is processing your task. Then after processing this 7.6 million each tasks, each task, then they are merging together, give you, you know, output. Okay. But to use this supercomputer, you have to learn, you know, parallel programming, not just normal programming, parallel programming. Okay. So think about this. Think about the Hello World program, the very, very, very you know, first program you write in, you know, uh, in C language, you know, class. Hello World program. What would happen if you, you know, write Hello World program, compile it, and send it to supercomputer? That Hello World program. Do you think hello the program is split into 7.6 million pieces? And each CPU is processing its portion. And after that, it is merging. Show you hello world message. No, right? Uh, only one CPU, right? One CPU is doing that processing. Okay, if you write, you know, hello world program. So to use to use this 7.6 million, you have to write this, you have to run parallel you know, programming. Again, so, you know, the supercomputer is not that different from hardware perspective, okay? So you have a lot of CPUs, super big memory and super big storage. And how about embedded computer? Embedded computer or embedded system also is not that different from uh, this PC or supercomputer from hardware perspective, because embedded computer also has CPU, memory and IO devices. And then, uh, so then what is the difference between, you know, super computer, uh, you know, these two and embedded computer? Embedded computer is special purpose computer system, special purpose. It is designed to perform only specific task. One example is this GPS. There is a computer inside the GPS navigator. Okay. When you drive a car, what do you do? You set the destination in GPS. Then this GPS, the computer inside GPS is computing the shortest path, okay? Show you the shortest path and also guiding uh, while you are driving, right? And the computer inside GPS was built only that purpose, no more than that, right? 
only that purpose. So again, uh, embedded system or embedded computer is special purpose computer system. Another example is uh, another example is uh, the computer inside your TV. Inside your TV, there's a computer, small embedded computer, and that computer is responding to your remote request. You are changing channels, increase, decrease volume use with your remote, right? And computer is responding. Computer was built only that purpose, responding your remote. And also the computer is, computer inside, uh, uh, you know, TV is showing you the schedule of the program, right? And then you can reserve the program you want to watch later on, right? And the computer is showing you that you know nice the program you know guide, and that is built only that purpose, no more than that. Okay, so again to you know recap, there is no difference you know in uh, these three classes of computers from hardware perspective, in that uh, all these computers uh, have CPU, memory, I/O devices. Uh, any question about this? Okay, let's move on. Okay, this one, Yunsu, can you please? Uh, components of a computer. Uh, same components for all kinds of computer. Uh, desktop, server, embedded. Input output includes uh, user interface devices display, keyboard, mouse, storage devices, hard disk, CD, DVD, flash, uh, network adapters for communicating with other computers. Okay, thanks. Uh, same component, uh, regardless of these you know, category, right? categories. And input output devices, IO devices, you know, uh, keyboard, mouse, hard disk, Wi-Fi module, uh, Bluetooth module, right? And yeah, everything, right, except CPU, memory, you know, everything is uh, IO device, okay? So that is an example, probably I don't have to explain, right? Keyboard, input device, and mouse input, and network, you know, cable, right? Monitor is also IO device, right? Output device. So if you open this uh, package, this box, then you can see uh, some internal, uh, internal component, right? So this one, this one, uh, where is CPU? Processor. Processor is this. So underneath this metal uh, sink, there is uh, CPU and main memory, right? DIM. Main memory goes to this spot. And that is the picture of a main memory we use in notebook computer. And battery goes to this uh, big space and you have hard, hard drive and DVD drive and so on, okay? So uh, <clears throat> uh, desktop computer system, block diagram of desktop computer system, you have CPU, uh, memory, and green boxes, IO devices, right? CPU, memory, and IO devices. And North and South Bridge, those are called the chipset, super complex hardware component, but its function is very simple. It is connecting, North Bridge is connecting CPU to graphics card. It is connecting CPU to main memory. South Bridge, right? It is connecting CPU to hard disk, USB, uh, PC Express card. So the function of this chipset is communication medium. CPU wants to talk to graphics card. CPU wants to talk to hard disk, USB, PC Express. Communication medium, it, it should go through this you know, chipset. And uh, CPU, sometimes we use uh, several uh, terminologies to refer to the same component. So those uh, terminologies are used uh, you know, very mixed way. Some people use this terminology, CPU. And so, some people use uh, 
processor to refer to the same component. Some people say microprocessor. Okay, and uh, it is rarely used, but some people use this microcontroller. This one is a little bit different, but uh, those you know four uh, terminologies are used in a very mixed way. But we usually use CPU or processor. Okay, so this one is a little bit different, but you know these three actually used in a very mixed way: CPU, processor, okay. CPU. We call it CPU. We call it sometimes processor. We call it microprocessor, right? And microcontroller is a little bit different. Okay, but you know, some people use that terminology as well. Okay, let's go through some important uh, IO devices. Okay, this one, uh, NADA. A mouse, optical mouse composed of LED for lighting, a tiny black and white camera, and a simple optical processor. Optical processor example, Agilent ADNS uh, 2051. LED eliminates the surface underneath the mouse. Uh, the, mouse. the camera takes uh, 1,500 sample pictures a second under the illumination. Successive pictures are sent to the optical pro uh, processor. The processor compares the images and determines whether the mouse has moved and how far. Okay, thanks. Oh, do you, you know what? Uh, inside this mouse, inside this mouse, there is a so, small computer. Small computer is integrated inside the mouse. Okay, so how mouse is working? Okay, LED, light emission diode, you know, LED, this light source. It is illuminating, illuminating the surface underneath the mouse. And there is a camera, inside this mouse, it is taking how many pictures? 1,500 pictures every second. So by comparing those, those images, uh, mouse is figure, figuring out how far you moved from position A to position B. So it is also amazing technology, right? So computer inside this mouse is figuring out how far you moved from you know, point A to point B. So processor, CPU, compares the images and determine how far you moved, okay? How about display device? Uh, this one, Dong. Can you hear me? Yes. So um, display devices. Nowadays, LCDs, liquid crystal displays are used as display devices. Um, so LCD is not a source of light. It controls the transmission of light. Um, image is composed of pixels. And depending on the size of the screen and the resolution, the display matrix ranges in size from HD, which is 1920 times um, 1080 to 4K, which is 3840 to um, 2160. Yeah. A color display might use eight bits for each of three colors, red, blue, and green. The image to be displayed is this, sorry, the image to be displayed is stored in memory called a uh, frame buffer. Okay, thanks. Uh, these days we use uh, LED, not LCD, LED display monitor, okay? Uh, the the LCD uh, monitor is a little bit, I think these days obsolete. We usually use LED monitor, but the difference between LCD and LED is only a light source, okay? So look at this. Uh, the how, you know, LCD or LED monitors are working, look at this. Uh, you know, there is a sky blue panel, front horizontal, uh, front glass with horizontal grid and a uh, rear glass with vertical, vertical, you know, grid. And in between these two, in between these two, there is a material called this one, the gray, liquid crystal, okay? 
and the light source is located behind, behind this real glass. A LCD case, uh, LCD case, uh, fluorescent light is located. And LED case, LED monitor, LED light emission diode is located, light source is located behind this real glass. And uh, depending on the voltage you apply these two you know, sky blue uh, panels, depending on the voltage, five volt, three volt, okay, 1.5 volt, depending on the voltage you apply, you can, look at this, you can control, you can control the amount of light passing through, passing through from this rear to front, this rear to front panel. So you can, you can control the brightness of the monitor. And also by placing this color filter, this uh, the red color filter, you can uh, you can you know display some color in the monitor. So you know uh, how big memory you need uh, to store uh, one image in uh, in a monitor, depending on the resolution, right? In in case of HD, so you have. 1920 pixels right so that can be that is composed monitor is composed of a lot of pixels right so you have 1000 1920 pixels okay and vertically you have a 1080 pixels 1080 pixels so to display one color, you can control the color in this, you know, each for each pixel. To display to display a color, we use we usually use R, G, B, red, green, blue. So by combining these three colors, you can by three components, you can display any color. Right? And for R, we use typically use one byte, one byte for R. So one by means what? 0 to 255, you can program, right? G, same thing, one byte for green and one byte for blue. So to display a color in this pixel, you need three bytes, Th three bytes of memory, okay? So then how big memory you need to display an image in this HD? Simple, right? 1920. 1920 pixels multiplied by 1080. For each pixel, you need three bytes, right? Three bytes. Then how big memory you need? For simple math, let's approximate that is 2000. Okay, that is 1000. So roughly uh, six, right? Roughly six megabytes of memory to display an image in HD monitor. So in memory, in main memory, you need main memory. You need to store uh, some data, some data to display an image. Six megabyte uh, data, right? Uh, the memory uh, area where you store this, uh, the image information is called the frame buffer. So in frame buffer, you store some data and that data will be displayed. That data will be displayed in monitor. Okay, let's move on. Uh, a little introduction, simple introduction of monitor and main memory and storage, this one. Minji. Main, me main memory and storage. Main memory uh, type loads instructions and data when power off. Secondary storage, non volatile. Magnetic disk is a flex memory, optical disk. Okay, uh, main memory. Let's go to that is. Uh, one example of main memory. Okay, we call that DIM, dual inline module, right? So let's go to here. 
So team, right? Team goes to this slot. That is main memory slot in yellow. This one, yellow, uh, black. That slot, you insert that team module. Okay. So CPU, this one. CPU goes to here and main memory goes to this yellow and this black slot. Okay, team. This one, so here, okay, team. That is a main memory. And secondary storage, uh, we, okay, hard disk, right? Hard disk, in these days we use SSD, right? Solid state drive. And uh, even though it is storing some data and your program, uh, this is not classified into you no know, memory. It is classified into IO device. IO device in computer, okay? Again, hard disk. Hard disk is not memory memory, right? It is, it is, it has you know memory component, but it is not classified into memory. It is IO device. Okay, same thing goes to SSD, right? So these days, hard disk almost got replaced by SSD, solid state drive, right? So inside solid state drive, you have flash memory, this kind of flash memory. Flash memory is non volatile. Main memory is volatile, right? Volatile means what? You turn off power, then all the data and program are gone, right? Non-volatile means even though you turn off power, data is still there, right? Okay, there is one. The last thing is uh, network. This one, Julia. Did you say me? Mm -hmm. I go by Jasmine, but yeah. Okay. So Jasmine, no, Jas yes. Jasmine, Jasmine, okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, networks. Networks have become so popular that they are the backbone of current computer systems. Networks provide communication between computers, resource sharing of hardware components, and non-local access from users. The po most popular type of networks is e Ethernet. Ethernet can be up to a kilometer long and transfer at up to 10 gigabits per second, uh, useful to connect computers on the same floor of a building, local area network, WAN, uh, wide area networks, WANs, uh, cross continents. Uh, WANs are the backbone of the internet, which supports the World Wide Web. Okay, thanks. Uh, you know, the reason why probably, probably the reason why you, you know, want to use computer is because you want to connect, you want to use internet, right? You want to access internet. Uh, and um, so when it comes to network, probably there is a separate class, right? Separate class uh, in uh, probably next year, right? For uh, third year college student, right? So networking course. Probably here you can you can uh, learn detailed about this, you know, Ethernet and when. But here just you know simple introduction, brief introduction. Uh, the local area network, RAN. RAN is you know uh, as the name implies, a small you know network like building size network, and campus network that is local area network. And there are several ways to design. Uh, local area network, like token ring and Apple talk and Ethernet. There are several technologies. Among them, uh, Ethernet is the winning technology. So these days, everyone is using Ethernet to construct LAN, a local area network. We use a LAN, Ethernet, you know, every day. And when, when is connecting continent, like, you know, Asia to you know, North, you know, America, Asia to Europe, it is connecting, you know, continent. Okay, brief introduction, and that is a network, you know, card, NIC, network interface card, right, NIC, NIC, and router, right. Okay, and let's talk about, you know, CPU, the most important component uh, inside a uh, computer. This one, Sungyun, can you? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. What kind of processor CPUs are you 
just say PC in pair AMD we are technologies second power and power PC use in Mac so now it is replaced with Intel processor Freescape formerly Motorola third Spark used in workstation some microsystem acquired by Oracle fourth um, most popular in embedded world. Five, this risk five will be used a lot of lot in embedded and for high performance computing work. We stick to risk five architecture throughout this course because architecture is easy to understand. Okay, uh, thanks. Some important, some important CPU you want to know. Uh, you know, x86. Okay, x86, we use x86 every day, right? Your notebook computer uh, and desktop computer are based on x86. But Apple is uh, Apple, right? They started to use you know, ARM. Okay, if you, if you have, you know, latest uh, MacBook and they are using ARM ARM. Okay, so x86, okay. Anyway, x86 uh, is very popular. Okay, Intel, AMD, uh, and Via Technologies. These three companies are uh, designing, manufacturing, and selling 86. And Intel, AMD, okay, this small, right, small portion, Intel, AMD, okay. And uh, PowerPC is also, it was very famous, you know, 20 years ago, but nowadays these are not that you know, popular in consumer electronics. In server computer, uh, this, uh, you know, data center, supercomputer, they use, you know, power PC, but consumer sector, you know, notebook, desktop, no, no, we don't use, you know, power PC. Spark was also very, you know, popular in the past, you know, 30 years ago, but nowadays, you know, it is, I think, almost dead. It is dead, obsolete. No one is using Spark. And ARM, you have to know ARM because, uh, you know, inside your smartphone, 99% of smartphones are using ARM, ARM. So Samsung Galaxy, right? Apple, Apple, you know, iPhone, they all ARM CPU inside, okay? So you should know ARM, okay? X86 is popular in desktop world, ARM, your know, smartphone world. And RISC-V, we are going to study RISC-V in this class because uh, it is emerging, emerging CPU. Is getting a lot of traction these days. Right? There are several start startup companies uh, designing and selling this chip. It will be very popular, uh, you know, as we move uh, uh, in in the future. And the reason why we stick to Risk Five is because it is very simple, super simple to understand. Okay, so if you are a little experienced, then you can design Risk Five CPU in one day. It is that simple. It is that simple. So, you know, the thing is, once you understand, last time I told you, right? Once you understand one CPU completely, then it is very easy to understand other CPUs, like x86, the ARM CPU. Okay, you can study those CPUs yourself. Once you understand one CPU completely, okay? That, that is important, okay? Uh, because, you know, all the CPUs have many aspects in common. They are providing very similar features. That is why we stick to, you know, simple CPU. Once you know, once you completely understand one, then, you know, the other things, you can just read their documentation. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about x86, okay, today, because that is the CPU you use every day, okay, x86. Why, what is x86, okay, first place? Chuyong? Pang Juyong? Okay, probably bathroom break. Okay, Hong Chan? X, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, X86. What is X86? 
generic term referring to processors from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA, derived from the model numbers of the first few generations of processors, 8086, 8286, 8386, 804, 86, x86. Now it generally refers to processors from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA, x86 to 16, 16 bit processor, x86 to 32, aka IA32, 32 bit processor, IA, Intel architecture, x86 to 64, 64 bit processor. Intel takes about 80% of the PC market and AMD takes about 20%. Apple has also been introducing Intel-based Mac from November 2006. Okay, thanks. So what is x86? Uh, the name comes from the first, uh, first few generations of processors Intel uh, produced, okay? First, a few processors was you know, named like this, 8086, 286, 386, 486. So something, something 86 X, right? Something 86. Uh, these days we no longer use that convention, right? The processor from Intel, Core i7, right? Intel is using this you know, brand name, Core i7, Core i5, Core i3, Core i9, those brand name. So we no longer use that convention, but because of that historical reason, we still use you know, this terminology, x86. So you say x86, that means it is a process from Intel, AMD, and VIA technologies. Okay. Uh, second bullet, probably I have to change this statistics because AMD is getting, AMD is doing a lot, you know, AMD is, uh, uh, AMD is doing you know, great these days, right? So they are taking, uh, I think similar market share, I think, with uh, uh, to Intel, right? That is in the statistics uh, two years, three years ago, right? You know, 80% of market was taken by Intel, the rest taken by AMD. That was statistics. And Apple, right? Apple actually uh, was introducing MacBook from November 2006 with Intel CPU inside. Uh, and then you know, from, I think last year, I think someone, right? Someone, uh, one, of, one of you have, you know, MacBook with uh, M1, Apple M1, you know, processor, okay? MacBook with M1 processor that has ARM, ARM CPU inside, right? ARM CPU. So they are diversing each portfolio. And eventually I think they are not going to use Intel you know, processor. They are going to use their own. M1 was designed by Apple. Apple right? So they, are, they want to use their own you know, processor for MacBook. So eventually I think they are using their own. Uh, so look at this. How how many how many you know people do you see in this picture, in this you know photo? Can you see two? Uh, one uh, big guy, okay, with his bunny suit, and the other guy is a ghost, right? Can you see a ghost? Yeah, ghost here, right? Someone is taking picture, right? Who do you think this guy is? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> okay, Zhu Yang, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's me. I was I was taking picture of this. Uh, uh, you know, back in two thousand eight, when I uh, before I left Intel and joined Korea University, I took this picture. Two thousand eight was Intel's forty years anniversary. This one, forty years anniversary. So they put this uh, poster in every conference room. The reason why I, you know, took this picture is because not because of this, you know, guy, but because of this the major product Intel introduced to the market for the last four years. Let me zoom in 
zoom in this, you know, uh, major product. Okay. So Intel, Intel was founded in 1968 as a memory company, not CPU company, you know, memory. They produced memory first. And from 1971, they produced CPU from 4-bit CPU, then 8-bit CPU, 16-bit. My, you know, my very first, uh, the, the CPU, the, the computer, the CPU inside my very, very first computer, 286, right? 16-bit computer, right? Then 32-bit computer. So until early 2000, early 2000, Intel produced a 32-bit processor. And from, you know, Pentium 4 Prescott, Prescott, Intel supported 64-bit architecture. 64 bit, early 2000. Okay. So if you purchase computer today, purchase computer today, that is based on 64 bit architecture. Okay. Uh, what, what is what is 64 bit architecture? And 32 bit architecture. What is then? What does that mean? 16 bit architecture. That is basic unit of data processing. That is the meaning of the, uh, uh, the architecture. So what do you mean by basic unit of data processing? One you know, good example is inside the CPU, inside the CPU, you have an important component called ALU. This ALU, arithmetic logic unit. So it is taking arithmetic and logic unit. So what the function of this ALU is, it is doing a lot of, or you know arithmetic operation like addition, subtraction, uh, you know multiplication, you know division like that, and then uh, logical operation, end operation, or operation, uh, you know so or logical operation. Right? So if for example, if you write C language like this, A is equal to B plus C. A is equal to B plus C, right? Then ALU will do this addition. ALU. And the meaning of this architecture is in case of 16 bit architecture, 16 bit architecture, it is taking 16 to 16 bit data and generate 16 bit output. That is also 16 bit. So basic unit, basic unit of data processing. Right. ALU is processing data by taking 16 to 16 bit data. Okay, how about 64 bit architecture? Everything is 64 bit, right? That is 64 bit, 64, 64. So ALU is taking two 64 bit data and do addition operation. Okay, that is the meaning of that architecture. Okay, 32 bit you know, architecture. 32 bit architecture, 32 bit to 32 bit data, and do some arithmetic logical operation, generate 32 bit. That means it is able to handle, you know, bigger, bigger number, right? From here to here, right? From to here to here, 16 bit to 64 bit. ALU is able to handle, you know, bigger number, right? Okay, that is the meaning. I'll keep, I'll keep. Uh, repeating, repeating that, you know, that uh, uh, the ex this explanation, because it is, you know, important, basic, but it very important, right, to understand computer. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, inside of the, the processor inside Intel you know, produced. Some examples, uh, Yun Yusang. Yes. Intel score du core two du two cores on one sheet two levels of caches L1 L2 on sheet 200 291 million transistors in 143 millimeter with 65 nanometer technology okay so so in this slide, there are you know technical you know, details probably you don't understand, right? So transistor, 
I assume you have taken a digital logic design course last semester and what know you know what transistor is. Transistor is the basic unit, you know, basic unit of designing, basic unit, right, to design digital logic. We start from transistor, right? From transistor, you design end gate, all gate, land gate. Using those components, you can design flip-flops, multiplexer, ALU. From there, you can design CPU, right? So the start point, right? Transistor is a starting point. Uh, you know, core to duo is pretty old, you know, 14 years ago, right? 14 years, 13 years old, you know, CPU from Intel. So there are two CPUs, two CPUs, and you have L1, Rebel 1 cache, Rebel 2 cache. Don't worry too much about this for now. We will get to that, right? After midterm exam, what the cache is. Why do you need level one cache, level two cache? Don't worry too much about that for now, okay? So anyway, here, uh, Intel Core to Duo, you have CPU and you have a level one cache, level two you know, cache, big level two cache. Almost half of this real estate, okay? Half of real estate uh, is used by cache. L2 cache. And how many transistors? How many the unit? Uh, roughly 300 million transistors. Okay, 300. In Korean, 3억 transistors, right? 300 million transistors. How in, you know, thumbnail sized, 143, 143 square millimeter. In thumbnail sized space, you have 3 million. 300 million transistors packed. And we are using this technology, 65 nanometer technology, semiconductor technology, okay? And how about core i7? The first uh, core i7, first generation of core i7, you have four CPUs, okay? And one more level of cache. Okay, let me, sorry, let me close the window. Some noise. Okay, so three levels of caches. So inside this core, you have level one, level two caches. Okay, and level three cache is shared by these four CPUs. Uh, again, don't worry too much about this cache, right? We'll talk about, we, we'll get to that, okay? And how many transistors? Uh, 700 million transistors, Chirok transistors, uh, okay? On thumbnail sized space. And semiconductor technology, 45. Compare that against this one, 65. Number is getting smaller, 65 now. 45. Using this 45 nanometer technology, you are designing this transistor. You are cooking up, you are manufacturing transistor, 45, okay? And uh, Sandy Bridge, second generation of Core i7. I was involved in this project when I uh, was in Intel, Sandy Bridge, okay? You have four cores, right? Four CPUs and big portion, again, cache. And big difference between first generation, second generation is this one, graphics core. You have a graphics engine. You have a graphics engine integrated in you know uh, processor. So uh, if you uh, if you don't play games, then you don't have to purchase separate. Graphics card, right? NVIDIA graphics card, right? ATI, you don't have to purchase that. Graphics engine is there, right? This graphics engine is doing uh, enough, you know, processing for your graphics. If you don't do, if you don't play games, right? That is enough, right? So you don't have to purchase, okay? If you don't play games. And number transistor, uh, one, close to one billion. Shibok. Right, one billion transistors and semiconductor technology. Sorry, two. Number is getting smaller, right? Forty-five. 
now, sorry, two. And this one here, 22, third generation, next generation, Core i7, right? Similar configuration, right? You have four CPUs, level three caches, cache, and graphics core picked up, it's getting bigger, right? Bigger compared to uh, second generation, okay? So let's skip this. Uh, AMD Barcelona, a little bit old, right? Uh, 14 years old uh, processor from AMD. So this one is probably important, very important background information, this one. Uh, okay, Hyunsu. Okay, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Semiconductor technology. Semiconductor technology is how small a transistor is. Um, so a transistor is simply an on-off switch controlled by electricity. I see integrated circuit combine dozens to hundreds of transistors into a single chip. We as a very large scale integration is used to describe the tremendous increase in the number of transistors in a chip. Okay, thanks. Uh, you should, uh, you should know this terminology, semiconductor technology, right? So that is, you know, that is that terminology. Uh, you know, you watch nine o'clock news, right? Every day, and your anchor used that, tech, that terminology, Bandoche Gisur, semiconductor technology, right? So what does that mean? Semiconductor technology means how small, how small uh, the transistor, how small you can create transistor, right? So those are, those are examples, right? Nine, 90 nanometer technology, 45 nanometer, 32. Nowadays, uh, Intel, Samsung, TSMC, they are using this seven nanometer technology. And what do you mean by that? Seven nanometer. And that is the cross section of transistor. What is transistor? Transistor is a switch. Like the switch you control, right? To turn on the light on the, in the ceiling, right? You manually turn on, turn off the switch, right? But transistor is electric, electrically controlled switch. So example is this, right? In this case, by applying some voltage in gate right here, apply, for example, five volt, then you are turning on this switch. Electricity uh, is passing through from source to drain. You are turning on. If you apply some voltage, five volt, 3.3 volt. So if you apply zero volt, okay, let me let me write. So here, if you apply, if you apply for example five volt, then electric, uh, you know, electric current is passing through. So switch is on. But if you apply, if you apply zero volt, then no electric you know, current, switch is off, okay, switch is off. So by applying the voltage, by applying voltage, you can turn on or turn off the switch. So it is electrically controlled switch, okay? That is transistor, switch. Simple, right, switch. And this technology means, seven nanometer technology means, how small this channel is. That is a technology. How small you can create this channel. Okay, from source to drain, how small this yellow, yellow arrow, right? How small? And there is a real picture, real you know, picture of transistor. And it is amazing, right? Think about this. <clears throat> Go back to sand bridge. I told you, right? Transistor is just a switch switch, right? And sand bridge, how many switches do you have in sand bridge? Uh, roughly 1 billion switches. 1 billion switches connected together in some intelligent way. Then that becomes a CPU. Then that becomes processor. Isn't it amazing? Just a switch, right? Connect them together. 
a lot of switches connected together. That becomes processor. How come, right? It is amazing, right? Just a switch. Okay, I switch. One billion switches connected together. Then somehow that becomes processor. Amazing, right? <laughs> I, I'll show you, you know, how to how to cook up how to cook up, you know, CPU uh, from you know, transistor later on. Okay. Okay. A transistor is simply on off switch controlled by you know electricity. Okay. IC means integrated circuit. Okay. You integrate. Uh, hundreds of transistors together, and that is called IC, integrated circuit. VLSI, as the name implies, very large, very large number of transistors integrated, very large scale, right? VLSI, simply you, you integrate a lot of transistors, a lot of switches together in one chip. That is called VLSI, right? Okay. And uh, this slide is showing you how small transistor is. Compare that transistor uh, with human hair. Human hair, 100 micrometer. One hundred <clears throat> micrometer, and we are talking about uh, ten nanometer technology. How small? How much somebody is? It is. <clears throat> One a uh, uh, ten thousand times smaller, right? Ten thousand times smaller than human hair. Okay. Uh, compare that. Compare that with ameba, right? Fifteen, fifteen micrometer, roughly. Roughly, this number, this number. So one thousand times, right? Roughly, one thousand times smaller. The unit is different. Micro, ten to the power of minus six. Nano means ten to the power of minus nine, right? Red blood cell, seven micrometer, seven micrometer. Compare that with the latest semiconductor technology, seven nanometer. So easy, right? Seven, seven. So you need micro, nano. So 1,000 times smaller than red blood cell, right? Transistor switch. So we are manufacturing that small switches, right? And compare that with H virus, right? Okay, what is that? Buckyball? What is that? Buckyball, I don't know. Okay. Okay, so Moore's row. This one is important uh, row. Probably you have heard uh, this row, I think. Uh, what is Moore's row? Yusang, can you please read? Yes, Moore's law. Transistor count will be doubled every 18 months. Okay, so transistor count, number of transistors, number of transistors packed in, in on the same size space will be doubled every 18 months because the transistor is getting smaller and smaller, right? So you can pack, you can integrate more and more transistors on the same space. So there is more through transistor count will be doubled every 18 months. Okay, so that is the graph <clears throat> x axis year and y axis transistor count is a log scale, right? 1000, 10,000, and so on, right? log scale. So back in 1970, okay, four bit CPU Intel produced has only 2000 switches. And now, not now, right? It is more than 10 years ago, 1.7 billion, 1.7 billion switches packed, connected, right? So that is more so, okay? So how to, so one example, how to create some meaningful logic from the switch, switch, this transistor, symbol of a transistor. I assume uh, you, Have you, have you seen this uh, schematic diagram from digital logic design course? So that is a transistor connected, right? Inverter actually. So A, 
and y. So that is input and output. Right? That is, for example, five volt, okay, zero volt. So, you know, inverter, what is the function of inverter? Inverter function is very simple, right? <clears throat> so you supply one, logic level one, then you get zero. And supply zero, then you get one. So what is one and zero? <clears throat> uh, physically, that is voltage, right? Five volt, for example, zero volt. Zero volt, <clears throat> five volt. So how do you get this function? Uh, very simple, by connecting these two transistors together like this. Okay. Uh, Jayan, you can, you can ask question probably. Any problem, Jayan? Jayan, any problem? Okay, you can ask question after class, after this class. So uh, that is inverter. You know, <clears throat> the thing is, if you apply five volt, uh, these trans the two transistors connected together, right? So you have bubble, right? That is PMOS transistor, P uh, MOS transistor, N MOS transistor, no bubble. Okay. Bubble means uh, low active. If you apply uh, zero volt, zero is low, right? Zero volt is, we, we, we think of it as zero, okay? Five volt, we think of it as one. Computer is handling zero or one, right? Zero and one, right? So uh, low active, zero, uh, this bubble means what? This transistor will be turned on if you apply zero, it's zero volt. No bubble means uh, this transistor will be, transistor switch will be, switch will be turned on if you apply one. One means, you know, five volt. Okay. So if you apply five volt, then which transistor is on? This transistor is on, right? This, this transistor is on and that guy is off. So that means output, output is connected. Output is connected to this is zero volt. So five volt and output is zero volt, logic level zero. So apply one, then you get zero, okay? What if you apply zero volt, zero volt, then which switch is on, which one is off? Zero volt, low active. So that is on, on, and this guy is off. So it is disconnected, right? Output is disconnected from this, you know, zero. And it is connected to on, right? On connected to here, connected. So that means, you know, one, five volt. Five volt will be coming out, which is one, okay? Zero to one, so inverter. Zero, one, one and zero, okay? So transistor diagram, right? So by connecting two transistors, you can create inverter, right? And this is a real, uh, using computer, you can, you can, uh, you can design this uh, inverter and send it to fabrication facility. We call FAP, 반도체 제조 공장, right? FAP, fabrication facility. Facility FAP. In short, FAP, we call that FAP. So design inverter with your computer like this, then send it to FAP, Samsung FAP, and TSMC FAP. Then they are manufacturing the inverter for you. So from, uh, from transistors to CPU, okay? Uh, from transistor to CPU. Using this transistor, you can create this uh, unit, logic gate, inverter, on the end gate, by connecting four switches, you can create this NAND gate, okay? You can create end gate, OR gate, NOT gate, NAND gate, and so on. Those unit logic gate. And combining those logic gate, you can, uh, 
create something more meaningful like multiplexer, flip flop, and ALU and decoder. Okay, something more meaningful. By combining these components, you can hook up CPU. Okay, so from transistor to CPU. Okay, transistor to CPU. So we start from transistor switch. Using switch, you create unit logic gate. From logic gate, you can create this, you know, you know, something meaningful, right? Uh, probably last slide. Okay, so here, so you design, uh, you design inverter with your computer like this, and send it to these guys, you know, fabrication facility, 반도체 공장, right? Samsung Fab or TSMC Fab, right? SK Hynix Fab. Fabrication facility. So on this wafer, you have a lot of inverters. This, you know, square. This uh, each square is one inverter. We call that die, technically. So you take out this yellow one, one die, one you know rectangle, okay, one square. Then package it, and that becomes inverter. Same thing goes to Intel. Intel is designing processor like this. Okay, that is the layout and send it to fabrication facility. And these guys are cooking up, cooking up, really manufacturing, okay, this chip on this wafer. And each one, each one is called, you know, die. Okay, each one is called I7. So you take out, take out one, uh, one, you know, one, this uh, die, then package it. And that becomes uh, CPU processor. And yield means yield, suyul. Yield means how many dies are working. So assume that you have 100 dies here. Then how many dies are working? It is functioning. If 80 dies are working, then yield is 80%. 80% yield means out of 100 dies. So 80 dies are working. Okay, that is the yield. And yield is very important. Uh, you know, metric for company because that determines the price, how many, and also margin you, you know, you are making, how, how much money you can make, right? Uh, yield is determining that, right? Everything is working, you have, you know, more margin, right? And just one die is working, then you have to set it at very expensive price to make money, right? So, Yield is top secret. No one is, no one is disclosing. Samsung does not disclose. Intel does not disclose yield information because that is determining the price and the margin you can you make. Okay, that is uh, for today. Any question before uh, letting go? Uh, Jahan. Kim Jahun, right? Jahun, any yes, question? Yes. No, no, no. It's just an uh, answer about your question. Oh, OK. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Any, any question? OK, that's it. Then see you. I'll see you next time on Wednesday. OK, bye. Bye.